I ask indigenous people sometimes, what do you think about climate change? And they say things like, it's because we stopped doing the ceremonies around the world, the ceremonies. Or they say it's because you've taken too many metals from the tropics and exported them to the northern hemisphere. And that interferes with the Earth's energetics. Or they say it's because you stole the gold from the mountains, and the gold is the soul of the mountains, and without their soul, how can they effectively administer the land? Or they say it's because you're sucking out too much water, and the water, the river no longer reaches the sea. So how does the ocean know what the land needs? And these seem like quaint, unscientific superstitions. And we know better than that, don't we? But our confidence that we know better than that is crumbling. Because if we really knew better, we would probably wouldn't be in a crisis that is so bewildering to us. So anyway, yeah, so I would like to see a little bit of humility in our culture, which comes from humiliation, which comes from failure. And that moment of, I don't know. Underneath the I don't know is knowledge that can only grow when, when we allow ourselves not to know. And then things become possible that are not possible from the worldview and the technologies that come from the cult of quantity and the story of separation the story that we're separate beings in a world of other. Those, what can come from those is very limited, powerful in its realm, appropriate in its realm, but insufficient to the task before us. I, was, uh, I have a friend from Brazil who runs a retreat center there, and he was telling me that you know, they needed a, a, to accommodate 40 more uh, guests for their retreats and stuff. And so he hired some indigenous builders to come. And he said, I'm not hiring them because they're indigenous. I'm hiring them because they're, they're really good architects. So they came and in three weeks, they built a, a, a building using only materials they found on the land, using no metal fasteners or anything that they brought in, using no power equipment, using no measuring tapes. And they built this structure that is a perfect marriage of form and function that keeps out the rain, yet it lets the smoke through the roof, that sleeps 40 people, that is warm in the winter and cool in the summer, that when, when he measured it, he found that it was like to within the millimeter, perfect golden mean proportions. A building that architects come to see, professional architects, and they begin to weep because there's no way that they could build this thing, especially not in three weeks. It's so far beyond what they know how to do, and it has a living presence that is almost absent in any architecture you see today, as if civilization were in steep decline. Like, why is the, the built environment so ugly now? Anyway, that is the kind, or maybe you've, you've, you've had um, personal experience of, of healing from a condition that medical science says was impossible to heal from, that was incurable. Miracles. Miracles being something that's impossible from an old story, impossible in a new story, that point to the existence of a new story. And when I hear those stories, I'm like, if that's possible for a body, what's possible for the body politic? What's possible for the ecological body? What are we accepting as limits that is just the shadow of our own views.